welcome to the KBJ Aperture Podcast. Kevin's eyes look insane, but he's got new hair. Virginia is a witch, and she farts in her chair. Jason is a spaz who's got an old man's ass. Welcome to the After the Show Podcast. All right, hello, and welcome to the KVJ After the Show Broadcast. Happy, happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello. Happy hump day. If you miss the regular show, you miss Jaber going to the gas station across the street here from our studios, buying us beer, and then coming out to realize his pants had been stolen. By somebody and all the clothes that he had, actually, not just his pants. We found you a shirt. How are we doing on the bottoms? I got some bot I found some. I got some some old joggers on. Nice. Okay. That's good. All I right. actually match better than I did before. <laughs> okay, well that's good. It is pretty funny though. Yeah. I love uh, the shirt, but uh and the pants are pretty cool too, but uh I think that's funny. <laughs> we had to take them out right there because if if we take took it off our, our clothes off too soon, sometimes stunts can get shut down too quickly. Mm-hmm. So you, you almost have to kind of go and time it out to where it's on the air, where you can get in there and get out. It was a little tricky, and I tell you what, that's not the first time I've had something stolen from that gas station. I've had sandals stolen from over there before. Oh, really? really? Yeah. They stole your yeah. shoes? Yeah, we did a stunt, and I had the, the sh- uh, sandals on the side of the road. Damn. And they took those son of a bitches real quick. Yeah. Guess it. Uh, hey, it's not surprising. Cautionary tale. Don't leave your shit outside the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. You basically left like a gift yeah. for the homeless encampment. <laughs> it was good clothes. I mean, Because they were like, ooh, that's a nice shirt. I really want to see the outfit when I'm driving into work. You will. That would be amazing. You will see a guy panhandling and asking you for money while wearing your shirt. <laughs> ton of KBJ Nation is in the racetrack and a ton that were not. Oh, really? People said hey to you, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, your trip, um, you did come back with beer, though, right? I do. Look at that. You guys want to have a beer? Did you want some? Yeah, can I yeah, have a beer? Yeah, crack a beer. If you don't mind. If you don't mind, I'll take one. It's beer 30. Yeah. Why not? You're moving well. <laughs> He's moving like an injured animal. Yes. Are you going to be okay on stage at the Crawfish Fest? I will be, do my best. <laughs> can we get you one of those, uh, is it cortisone shots? I don't. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I don't know. My sister's a nurse. Sister. Let me ask her if she can find some illegal cortisone, because I don't have a prescription. And Mm. I figure, like, she knows where to inject it, right? I want to say I've done a cortisone a long time ago, and I thought it did help for at least a couple days. I know a guy that had a shoulder injury, and I took him to a doctor that I knew, and the doctor gave him a shot of the cortisone in his shoulder injury, and he was fine for about three weeks. He said it was great. No pain, no nothing. It does come back. Yeah. But it'll get you through your performance on stage on Saturday. It, it masks it. Yeah, it's like a Band-Aid. Mm. It's not healing. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you can find one. Uh, let, me, let me call around to some of my black market friends and see. Just don't even tell me you're doing it. Go, hey, Bird, look over there. Pizza. Doink. Stick me. <laughs> Where do you want me to stick it? Anywhere. I don't care. Bunghole? N- not there. That'd be rough. <laughs> All right. They don't say anywhere. You're right. Cheeks. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, wonder with those. And I, I, the one thing they might ask is, okay, what they probably have to find out what the damage is. Uh, because, yeah, if you would do something that gets rid of the pain, but that's what your body's doing. It's trying to tell you, be like, hey, big dummy, don't be jumping around on this thing. It's all messed up. I remember there's a story about this high school football coach back in Kentucky. Guy was winning state championship after state championship. Amazing. They found out what he was doing. He was putting something in the water, a painkiller in a sense. What? His star running back, and I think it was in the state championship, played and finished a game on a broken leg. What? And afterwards, when the pain stuff wore off from the water, that was just it. He was screaming in pain and agony, <gasps> caused permanent damage, almost had to amputate his leg. And oh. that's when it kind of came the scandal. They found out he was spiking the water with pain stuff. So his guys were out there breaking arms, doing all this kind of stuff. He had them playing, you know, at a thousand percent. 
Wow. And they're like, yeah, then his whole years of state championships and all that kind of stuff crumbled. That's Winning, crazy. Yeah. Winning does something to a human. Just, it turns to crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What some people do. What some to people get to that do. Level. It is pretty insane. Yeah. I've been running on it too, so that's not helping it. I mean, uh-huh. so, but yeah, the, we'll talk. Well, that's what I was hoping maybe you did some of those more uh, plyometrics, uh, high impact interval training stuff that it's less movement. Maybe you could do some of that and not hurt. I did that yesterday, and it, oh my gosh, that was, that, that, that just, it sucked such donkey dick. It was awful. <laughs> that's how I felt every day. I would go in there for <laughs> my workouts, and it was just. Pure hell. I mean, it gets it kicks your ass and it gets you in shape, but it's pure hell doing it. Burpees and in a hot room playing techno and someone just thinking about <laughs> high level math really could be my my yeah hell. right. Put them all together. Yeah, yeah. I got about five to ten <laughs> exercises that if you do, you will be nauseous in minutes. You'll be in pure <laughs> hell. You won't be able to catch your breath. You'll be dizzy. You'll feel like you're going to pass out. And it's just that was just it. One day, I mean, I was uh, one of the best days I'd had was when my trainer just said, "Kev, I got to go to another gym. Our schedule's not going to work out. I can't train anymore." I got to tell you internally, the day he said that, I was so happy. <laughs> Were you afraid to kind of break up with him because you guys yeah, had I history? I never would because I was like, well, it was it was a history, it, and it also was my own self. It was just saying, dude, you know, come on, man. Don't don't be lame. Don't be weak. Go out and do this thing. But, oh, I hated it. And, yeah, and then after he was done with me and, I, it, it, you know, there's nothing I could do about it. I was like, okay, I got my excuse. Isn't that nice? You have things in life where you yourself wouldn't do it because of the guilt you give yourself. You wouldn't be able to do it. But if it just – there's no way you could do it even if you wanted to. And you're That's like, oh, I well, I tried. I was like, no way. Oh, man. Uh, Going to miss you, bro. Uh, and I do miss him. He's a great guy. Love to death as a person, but all oh, the workouts. You don't miss that pain. No, I do not. That runner's high they always speak of. There's yeah, no high. I've had it before That's when I was younger. Really? I'll, I'll take the, I don't believe it. I'll, honestly, I'll take the weed high instead. It's, it's a lot easier, Virginia. It's kind of <laughs> chill. <laughs> Can you perform weed high? I don't. I I try not. In my older year, I remember when I was younger, would do shit on stage, and I would all get fucked up, and it just it's a recipe of disaster. Are you a mm. hundo p sober when you take the stage, or maybe just do like a shot? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a drink just okay. to kind of you know. But yeah, get you in that fun zone. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, I have to remind people that. Go on stage. I have to be kind of a dick sometimes. Say, yeah, you can't drink anymore. You can't oh, drink. You gotta oh, you got to be the police. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. and I don't want to be the police. Me yeah. be the police? That's, that's no fun. Right. Being the police sucks. Mm. It does. Yeah. Well, another Boeing story today. Another cr- one? Another one, yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm not. It's, it's, it's unreal. <laughs> Uh, there is a new whistleblower that is claiming the Boeing, Boeing 787 Dreamliner has engineering issues that could lead to the planes breaking apart after decades of use. The claim is that the parts of the fuselage are fastening together improperly or fastened together improperly. The whistleblower known as Sam Selipor says he is doing this because he wants Boeing to succeed and to prevent the crashes from actually happening of course isn't that what all of us want you think so if you're a good human we want crashes to not happen yes (laughs) duh you're so old-fashioned boeing is saying the claims are inaccurate and that there are all there are no safety risks they're already though trying to improve their quality control after a series of recent issues with their 737s and right now a lot of people are not going to take boeing's word for it because every weekend You've got video of the hood of engines flying off or the panel in the plane or a pilot that is looks like he's scotch taping a window back in before he takes flight. You know, those kind of things are not you believe to me, you know, show me, don't tell me. Right. And what you see is a lot more than what you're going to believe on Boeing. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But another crazy story about them. There was another story that uh, happened here that uh, had some people talking. Amy Harris, I don't know if you know her name, but boy, she had gotten some things kicked up. Uh, Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley, had been staying in a place in Delray Beach 
And I guess she left some things behind, including her diary. This was four years ago. And this Amy Harris finds it. And she's like, okay, wait a minute. This is the president's, you know, president, or at least at the time, the VP's daughter's diary. She's like, I could get some money for this. She, in 2020, tried selling it to Trump's campaign. They didn't buy it. But she went to a conservative group known as Project Veritas, and she got $20,000 of the $40,000 paid by them and for some other personal items, which, I mean, they're not hers. You know, she just left them behind. And then it kind of ran off and it, it took its own story. I think from what I'm gathering from just my quick little research on it, somebody did a forgery of the diary because they believed, okay, this is believable now, that had... Ashley talking about how Joe wanted to get in the shower with her and she didn't want him in there. And, Mm. you know, there were some crazy things. And, you know, people have seen some of those photos with Joe Biden sniffing girls' hairs and things like that hair. And so they thought maybe there's something to it. I think that part of it is all conspiracy. But, yeah, they laid the hammer down on this girl. Uh, She was sentenced to a month in prison and three months of home confinement for stealing and selling uh, Joe Biden daughter's diary. And she has come out saying that, yeah, that transcript that you'd said where I was trying to say my dad was taking a shower with me is not true. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of crazy. I mean, you just wonder, though, what would you do? Say you had something and it was, whoa. It was something about a, arguably the most powerful man on earth. Let's say you had that. And you're like, oh, my gosh, if you had the diary and there was something in there and you thumbed through it, what would you do with it? I mean, it looks bad that obviously she she did it just for money. Right. But do you sit on it and not say anything? If there's something that could expose and ultimately bring down something in ultimate pa- somebody in ultimate power like that, how I, do you handle it? I would not get involved in stuff that's on a political power level like that because mm-hmm. that's how people die. Yeah, no doubt. I Absolutely. believe in yeah. the whole they would kill you for something like that. <laughs> so I d- would not want to mess with that. It's possible now it really depends if, if you're talking about my gosh there is somebody out there and this this person is making decisions and they're driving us down a dangerous path and let's say that you have somebody that's a leader you believe is uh, you know causing people to lose life destroying your country things like that and what you have in your hands could bring them down and get them knocked out of office yeah you, you're right I, I i'm with you i think my first instinct is man i freaking put that like cocaine you know i'm scared of it if i found it on the beach i would put it down i'd run the other direction i think i'd do the same thing with this no i would take the co- co- cocaine for sure i would not take the political diary i th- i don't know i, I think i take the <laughs> cocaine and then you give it to the cocaine I, okay. and I give it to virginia and say all right it, i would give with, it to, i would give it to a guy i go you deal with it and I, then i, I, I just want to cut <laughs> I would say the same thing to a guy. No, my dumbass would put it on Facebook Live. Guys, I found fucking cocaine. We're going to go viral with this. <laughs> I, that's what I would end up doing, honestly. What do you think you have a better chance of dying from? Exposing a huge political and powerful figure with scandal or taking cartels cocaine? I think you have a bigger chance of getting killed with the cartel. But they may not know. They may not be able to track it. If they tracked it, they would have retrieved it. Right. They don't see it. They don't know where it is. The thing with the diary, they're going to know who you are, right? Exactly. Yeah, the cartel may not be like, all right, somebody's got our coke. we got to find them. Well, then if that's the case, it's easily. if If the cartel knew where the coke was, they would have it. I'm too big of a pussy to do either, I think. But, man, I just... (laughs) I wonder what I would I do. am not fucking with the political stuff. There's no way. That's how you get killed for sure. If I had so if I had something on somebody political and it was big and it was next level and it was awful, yeah. fuck yeah, I'm going public with it. Yeah. If it was a terrible thing that was lying and I was uh following um this show that was kind of breaking down a little bit of the time frame of what was going on with JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and the whole Cuba situation in the Cuba. CIA, Cuba. And man oh man, when and it was talking about all the conversations that were happening with some of the CIA leaders, some of the heart to heart conversations that uh, John was having with his brother Bobby about he's like he was even telling him he's like they're going to kill me. 
He's like, they are going to kill me. Damn, he knew. Yeah. He, he knew not to play. Uh, yeah, and he's the freaking president of the United States. And he's like, I'm, it, it, there was one comment. I, I'm fascinated. I'm not all the way through the end. They haven't exposed all the details, but I'm going to really do a deep dive on this because, my goodness, it just he knew it was happening. And then just all of a sudden, coincidentally, mm. there's one guy that decides he's going to take him out. That time in history is something I'm I'm always interested in. Is uh, it's fascinating because the I Cuban it, Missile Crisis, that entire moment of how close and how how shit could have really really went south real quick. Well, I think it started the era of all of these dark ops and all these kind of groups you don't know, and now they've done so many movies on them and so many stories. But I just. Man, you just get a feeling there is a serious basis in truth in this. That if we knew, it would completely blow our minds. Do you think there's there's more situations where, like the Cuban Missile Crisis, yes. that we don't know Countless. about people? Countless. where We were on the brink Countless. of possibly some type of yes. war or disaster. Countless. Countless. I, I just and I don't know that you'll ever know the truth. Maybe 50 or 100 years after these things come out, you'll start hearing about some of the You're secret right. operative things that were happening. The secrets come out when the guys that can be fingered are dead. Yeah. When they can do they do no time for their crime, that's when you'll find out the truth if somebody knows well, and if somebody's still around to talk. You sit and wonder, how many times have you been just chilling in your house and there was, there was a nuclear possibility about to happen? You had no idea. And at the last second, cooler he heads prevail. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're in that era right now, too, man. There's stuff going on. It's just And, and you don't know. You it's, don't it's know. It's just crazy. And it's probably going to get worse because even in 100 years, would you believe it? I mean, the lies and pro propaganda has always happened throughout the ages. I mean, you go all the way back to the Romans and things like that, and there was always propaganda that was happening. But now the technology makes it so much more confusing, and it's much easier to validate stuff. I, I know somebody, and they were ruffling some feathers, and, and they got people all pissed off. They go, you're crazy. It's conspiracy. But this is one person that I know. They really believe that America's on the brink of a civil war. I heard that we're yeah. on the brink of a war, like real war. Yeah. yeah. I know people in the military mm -hmm. that have been told to prepare for war, mm -hmm. and they are shitting their pants. Yeah. No, I th there's, I'm sure there's legitimacy in all those things. And I, I, I think, honestly, we are always on the head of a pin. And you just hope that we have the right leaders that have the sensibilities that don't let us fall into a World War II situation. So we are shooting down Civil War, but we are definitely uh, promoting World War. That's what's going to I'm not shooting down either. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could simultaneously have both. <laughs> oh, no, it, hell in a handbasket. Two for one war. <laughs> Two for one war. You want World War, you want Civil War, well, or you want both? Mm. I, I think, too, I think just because people are on social media a lot, so many people are, yeah. it just seems like everyone's going, mm -hmm. with, with every type of person on in our country is going after each other. It feels like it's a bubbling point. Right. Is that just social media uh, making it appear that way, or is there some truth to that? No, I think it's always the fringes. Uh, you know, as I, as I do deeper dives in all these uh, topics, 60 to 80% of the country is still normal, and we're chill. And you just got the fringes, man. The 10% on either side is driving these kind of things. And that's why the key is the majority's got to stay cool and don't let yourself get sucked into the rhetoric that's going on. If we, the majority, can stay calm and cool and not get emotional, we'll be fine. We won't have these kind of issues. And the same thing with the world leaders and everybody else. You just got to be like, no, I'm not, I'm not fighting that war. I'm not doing that. And just be like, I'm not going down that path. Because I think what happens, I think people do because everyone's on social media pretty much. Everyone watches all this stuff. And you're right, the 10% the on this side or the 10% on that side yeah. or, or just it's a on whatever, whatever state, it does appear as if it's the whole world or it's the right. whole country. Yeah. And that what it makes me fear that that 10% starts to become 15% mm. and then 20% because we're yeah. all watching a mm. show that we think is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, there's, there's definite fear. I mean, look, propaganda was a big part of the more recent wars, the World War II and World War One, and now the ability to come up with good propaganda and to get it to the masses is a lot easier. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a scarier time for that reason. It's way scary for yeah. propaganda. It's just a weird time, too.
Yeah, it is. And, and it his, is. In human history, yeah. we're at an odd time. Mm. Like something we've never seen before. And it's, a, it's coinciding with my menopause, which is really fucking with me. I gotta be honest. Well, we, we've just witnessed mm. technology speed at such a next level rate. It's never happened in human history, ever. Yeah, you throw in the technology, plus the fact that, at least for me, uh, my generation, I was too young to know anything about the Vietnam War, didn't know about World War II, which would have left uh, an impression upon you. And so we don't have that firsthand experience to recognize just how awful that kind of conflict can be on a large scale. And that's the danger is without having the firsthand experience you may march yourself into that again. And I think every time period or every lifetime has got mm. some major shit they have to worry about. Mm. If it's the 1700s, y'all yeah. had different problems. Oh, no doubt. And, and, and so mm. on. You know, even in earlier times, some really fucked up shit. Most generations seem to have at least had some major conflict where they saw a lot of bloodshed and death and... You know, then they were like, oh, war's terrible. And then they tell the next generation, is like, ah, can it be that bad? Holy shit, war really is terrible. <laughs> right. And they go through a war. They're like, no, it's just bad. And then they tell the next generation, it's, you know, it, it history does, repeats itself. It seems like a, a repeating cycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, had to do a deeper dive on this story because it was definitely fascinating. Man, what a, what a legend here. I don't know, uh, Virginia, I'm sure you've not been plugged in. And I hadn't really heard this either. The Giants of Lovelock. Story that had come out in the uh, New York Post just this last week. The Giants of Lovelock. Fascinating tale here. Now, in 1911, a pair of miners allegedly unearthed 60 human skeletons in a Nevada cave, including some measuring seven to eight feet tall. In 1912 and 1924, excavations found a size 29 sandal and a handprint embedded into the rock face that measured twice the size of an average human palm. Then in 1931, a Nevada miner found two mummified skeletons measuring eight and a half and 10 feet tall with red hair. The find adds to speculation about an extinct human race known as the Giants of Lovelock. And the Palti tribe that was nearby called them the Sitaka. And legends of supersized humans who roamed the area around Lovelock thousands of years ago are rooted in Native American lore. They were fierce, red-headed, pale-skinned giants who arrived from Central America by boat and attacked local tribes. And then a 16th century Spanish conquistador documented an ancient Peruvian tale about giants who crossed the ocean on large reed rafts. He described them as being so tall that their legs from the knee down were as long as an average man's entire body. Dude, there's a lot of giant talk from, from history. There Damn. really is. Those sound intimidating AF. Giant gingers? Yes, it's what it is. Giant Holy gingers. Holy shit. Elongated skulls, possibly 3,000 years old and much larger than normal human skulls, have also been found high in the Andes Mountains. And my girlfriend, Kimmy, she's a ginger. And gingers don't feel pain the same way that regular would like blonde hair or oh, wow. if you have brown mm -hmm. hair. People that are um, redheads sometimes require way more anesthesia, oh, wow. pain medicine, uh -huh. stuff like that. So imagine in war, if you don't feel pain and you're just able to fight your ass off. So if they require more anesthesia, it means they feel more pain, right? Yeah. No, they don't feel the pain. They, 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 they like, they're balls. So that means they, would, they wouldn't have they any would anesthesia. They would need less anesthesia. They would not have it. They would actually not take any because they, like, holy shit, I can take so much pain. Well, they have a higher tolerance. For pain? Yes. That's why you wouldn't need anesthesia. Right. So They're they tougher. Don't, they don't take anesthesia. The anesthesia doesn't, doesn't work on them. So they need... I'll, okay. A lot. Of, all right. <laughs> Maybe if there's a ginger listening, they can call, because I don't know if I got that right. Can you call Kimmy? She doesn't feel pain like I do. I feel when pain. When something hurts me... Like, if we both go through childbirth, she's like, eh, it wasn't that bad. Right. Okay. So they have a higher pain tolerance. Right. Yes, which would make them more dangerous in battle. Right. Okay. Long I, I said it wrong. I think I said it <laughs> yeah, wrong. Yeah, you did. I Completely just... butchered. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Your whole story, you know what? Don't feel. I, I'm drinking a beer. Don't okay. feel bad because I, I get shit bad mixed up all the time. Cheers. So these elongated skulls that they found in the Andes Mountains also reportedly have red hair. 
Now, the last remaining giants were supposedly chased into a cave in Lovelock where they were trapped and ultimately burned alive by a fire set at the entrance. Those Native American tribes finally they bound together and said, we have a common enemy. The only way we can take them down is for us to all get together. And that's what they did. Now, archaeologists did find evidence of significant burning near the cave's entrance where all these skulls were apparently found during the initial excavations. The giant skulls that were reportedly found in Lovelock Cave, though, are considered by most experts to be the result of misinterpretation or exaggeration. And the skulls were not actually giant, and the claims are often attributed to a combination of misidentification, misinterpretation, and sensationalism. In fact, I believe they thought there was uh, some kind of like a shuckster that was going around and trying to sell, hey, come take a look at the cave and the skulls and all that stuff. And there's no credible evidence to suggest the existence of giant human skulls, and such claims are generally regarded as folklore hoaxes. Because people are saying, do DNA tests on where are these skulls? And they're like, uh, well, nobody has them. Uh, that, you got that DNA, Bob? I lost that DNA. <laughs> yeah. The Humble it, Museum Bob. once offered a display of some of the human remains, but in respect for American Indians, the display was removed and the human remains have been repatriated because I guess they felt like, okay, these aren't real giants. These are just Native American remains, and it's disrespectful for us to have them and have them on display. So a fascinating tale. It looks like it was a hoax, but you just wonder how the folklore happens in those stories and all those kind of things. And sometimes it's people hearing a folklore story and saying, hey, how can we make something out of that? Oh, man, it's all, yeah, there's, there's a lot of folklore about giants roaming the earth. And I'll tell you where you see that is if you go to the Holy Land. Oh, you were just there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was like five years now. But, really? Yeah. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. yeah. Five years, Anastasia. I feel like it was two years ago. Five years. <laughs> Oh. But when I went and I knew this, for instance, if you go there, you're always seeing all these special things. And that's the one thing I love, man. I love Bible history and conversation and all that. So I was just, you know, loving being in Jerusalem and in Israel. But I went to one place and they had the bones of David in a crypt. I'm like, man, the bones of David. David who? David, the, the David. The David. David the from the Bible. David. The David, disciple? Or? The, the guy who took down Goliath. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, how strong is this beer? <laughs> Does somebody put fucking cocaine did in your beer? Did that beer? Is it's it, a 7.5. Is that a Diddy beer? Is that mushrooms? In that it's beer? a 7.5. The fuck are you talking about? Delicious. Last five minutes, you have not been on planet Earth. <laughs> Which David? Uh, there, when the Bible you're talking about, if you say the David, it's pretty much you know the guy. The guy that's. Yeah, I don't know him. Okay. <laughs> what is happening to you? <laughs> okay, well, there's a guy in the Bible, Virginia, named David. All right. Who was the king of Israel, and there's a story about David and Goliath, a small guy who took down a giant with a slingshot and three stones. You know that story, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that guy. So they were claiming that they had his bones in a crypt. And I was like, there's no way they have David's bones. I mean, they don't really even have any proof that David even existed uh, himself. So to have the fact that you don't even know if this guy really existed and then you've got his bones and I'm like, come on. man. Did you stand up and call bullshit? You go in. It's a very respectful thing. You have to put on uh, a yarmulke. And that was the thing that kind of got me because I had my fresh hair on from hair club. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a box of yarmulkes that looked like they were used. Uh. And I'm like, I just how badly do I want to see this crypt that I know is not real? We've got the bones of David. We, we also have a, a, the, the beard of Moses over here. It's we have what? a Lysica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to put on these used yarm. But I did. I uh, sucked it up, and I went in there, and I saw it. Yeah, it's a very... Um, it's, a, it's a place of reverence, and there's a lot of people that are in there praying and all this kind of stuff, and I obviously would not want to poo-poo on their thing. But, yeah, I, I, I call them like, yeah, I don't know. And they have a lot of points of reference like that. They say, this is where that happened. I'm like, uh, you guys sure about that? Yeah. Like, so you are, you're calling it out a little there's bit. There's a lot of places, but I think for the same thing about the, the, the giants of Lovelock, it's, it's that. 
people see, hey, we can turn this into a tourist attraction. And let's just, it doesn't matter. Just claim it was here. But you did it right, though. You don't call out bullshit when you're there. You wait yeah. till you get home in the States to say bullshit. Yeah, now we are praying. And- you don't want to fuck around and find out in Israel. Yes. Right. Do, we've learned one thing. We do not talk shit or act a fool in any other country nope. than the States. Right, no doubt. You behave yourself. Yes. And because not- they don't treat people the way we treat people. I think either Georgia or Alabama is one one of those videos I was watching where I was watching the cops go. I mind my p's and q's in that state. Too, <laughs> yeah, there's kinda... some southern states that don't treat people right either. Well, I watch a lot of I watch a lot of, of police videos now, and I have noticed in a lot of these videos now the more modern ones. Police talk to people a little bit differently than they used to because oh, they yeah, know yeah. everything's up. Most stuff's on body cam. Stuff's going up on YouTube. People, they don't want to be on TikTok. They, well, because when yeah. you are an ass an asshole as a cop, they will without a doubt come for you. And you could just... You could tell a 2017 video compared to a 2024 video. That's funny. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, it's, it's, I, I assume it has well, completely revolutionized the uh, cop game. In that way, it's good because mm-hmm. we should be treating all people with respect. And it shouldn't take a body cam or a person in a car with a phone to make everybody be cool. But if that's what it needs to be, that's what it needs to be. And, and not mm-hmm. to say that stuff still doesn't happen because it still does yeah. what we're someone's on both sides, the passenger or the cop. It's Absolutely. just being an asshole when they don't need to be. And yeah. it's, uh, it's good that it is on camera. Well, there's one that was on the news today. It was a cop involved shooting now from what i could gather just watching the story it looked like it was justified they had a guy they'd uh, pulled over uh warrant i think he initially was driving without a seat belt but the guy had his window cracked he pulls out a gun shoots oh hits, no hits a cop in the wrist oh no and then it's just a barrage though i think it was like 91 shots something like that in 26 seconds if you take one shot at a cop and there's any cops there you're done yeah well that's just it and so i, I think what you're looking at you know of course the mom is like they killed my baby and this and that and he had had he another, shot at a cop he had had another prior where he'd taken a gun into a place Place that he wasn't supposed to and you're right i mean look that if you are if you pull out a gun and you shoot and you hit a cop surrounded by a bunch of cops you are going to die i mean that's just Absolutely. that's just america just every that's the time well, that's the way the cops are going to play out yeah. that scenario you showed a gun and you shot first look yeah. how about this if you if you shoot a gun at anybody whether you're a cop or not don't be surprised if someone's got a gun they shoot you 90 times back yeah don't be surprised because right. they don't know if you're right. still coming at I them i get the grieving mom she's like they killed my baby and it's like yeah but you know your baby did shoot at a cop and hit a cop you know so you just can't you got to tell your baby you can't shoot at cops but yeah they were just saying now the critique is that i mean do we need to fire that many times and they were saying yeah we had a young rookie cop he was freaked out and he just kept going you know and so that's that's to your point of the critique of oh yeah it's all on that. videos that's what they do they count how many shots and how long and even if they could say you were justified <laughs> There's one, it wasn't that long ago, but in my town, Palm Beach Gardens, the guy was swimming and got into it. The The woman was at the pool area, and she was telling the guy swimming, don't swim that way. Or He's like, well, I live here, too. So they got into like a little verbal thing. Well, her husband came down to defend her and showed him a gun. And so the guy that was swimming called the cops. The cops showed up, and the guy who was swimming was like, yeah, but... And the, 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 the the woman cop came out and said, freeze, free, put your hands up, put your hands up. And it became a thing mm. where she, I think she got suspended. I think, uh, I think that just the way it, it all went down was not the right way. He sued, I think, uh, because he's the one that called. He didn't have a weapon on and, and she pulled the yeah. the gun out. And mm. I think, the and, and, the and the reason why I said woman cop was because everyone was making all, it turned into this big fight about women versus men and all this. And it just, it just, mm. it, it all turns ugly. So yeah. just know on social media, everything's being filmed and it's going to be ugly when it comes yeah. to all that shit. Yeah, no doubt. But I mean, these videos now are really, playing a part massively in some of these cases there's one that uh, is a trial right now and it's been all over x have you seen the video of the guy in the river that's getting harassed by the teenagers 
and they then shove him down into the water and oh, they're kind of like no. on top of him. They hit him and he comes up with a knife. I didn't see this. He stabs four of them. One of them, uh, one of the five, he actually stabs five. One of them he kills and he's on trial. And that's the whole thing is the debate about, uh, you know. They his, pushed him first and were messing with they him? Were, yeah, they were. Apparently, and, and that's the context where the video picks up. Apparently, he was trying to retrieve a phone from a friend and. You know, these were kind of being little punk teenagers, and I don't know what might have brought it on, but they are very aggressive, and they're calling him a pedophile and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's just there, and they're very aggressive towards him. And then, yeah, they wind up shoving him down. So he's in the water, and then I think someone hits him in the face, and then that's when he's just like, okay, he, you know, we all kind of have that. You kind of freak out, and you see red. Fight or flight. Yes. And I think that's just a biological condition that we all have. And sometimes you want to be like, well, rationally. But yeah, but you'd be in that situation. Exactly. You know, you don't know. You feel in danger. You're in water, and you've gotten struck, and you're just like, I got to, like, they're going to kill me. So, you know, like I said, one of them wound up uh, stabbed to death and is bleeding. And that video is going to be a big part of that trial. Cause, and I think it was the kids that were filming. It would be interesting to see, like, the beginnings of these videos. Because a lot of times, mm-hmm. especially on TikTok, they pick it up where the action starts. Well, I want to see what happened before the action. Yeah. What was everybody doing? Who threw the first punch? Who was the aggressor? Who started yeah. it? If you attack somebody and then they stab you defending themselves, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm on the side of the stabber. Well, Laura asked, like, how would he know if... If they were going to beat him to death or drown him. And that's what some people say. But that is the question. In your mind, you don't know. And you're so, out there fishing. You've got a knife on you. Right. Well, you know, the way you find out if they're going to or not is one way is you wind up dead. Right. And so that's where some people are saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm not going to wait to find out. I don't know the answer to the question, but there's two options here. Either they are or they're not. I would love to see the beginnings of all these videos. And I'm sure the judge will ask mm-hmm. to see the beginning as well yeah that's a big big part of the story yeah so it'll be interesting to see what happens in that but yeah these these videos and i guess that's why people when they get in any kind of conflict now you immediately go right for your phone right and you start recording because you don't know if you're now making evidence for a trial that you're gonna wind up in yeah but to that point if you're ever in a situation and somebody feels they need to film i'm getting the fuck out of there <laughs> i really am i'm just i'm like all right if somebody has a camera out and they need to document what's going on i don't need to be here <laughs> right i need to go that's a sign that if you think this is going to go down that way let's go y'all all right well thank you very much for all the uh, emails bird thank you for this beer it has been delicious yes it's very good it's making me a little dizzy my pleasure <laughs> i'm gonna go give virginia a bible lesson real quick and <laughs> talk to her about anesthesia so we're gonna get caught up to speed you guys enjoy your day we'll see you back here tomorrow goodbye